Hello YouTube, this is a review on the Cimarron Colt Single Action Clone Revolvers. Uh, Cimarron carries Uberti and Paeta high-end Italian replicas. So we're going to also kind of go into a little bit of uh, the differences between the Uberti made and Paeta made uh, replicas. This top one here is, is a Uberti uh, manufactured, the bottom one here is a Paeta manufactured. Uh, both for, imported uh, by Cimarron from Italy. So let's dig in here. Uh, let's start off by taking a look at what comes in the box. Okay, so this is the uh, Uberti box. It has a nice uh, western theme with a uh, horse rider on there. Cimarron. Comes with a bumper sticker, Cimarron Firearms Company. I'm your Huckleberry. Pretty cool. Uh, NRA swag, Texas Jacks. So this is the retail side of, of Cimarron. Uh, they sell all things Wild West: cowboy hats, belts, cartridge belts, holsters, boots, uh, anything you need to to be an old West cowboy. This is their uh, warranty card, owner notice, and manual. Safety pamphlet. This is what the gun was wrapped in, a plastic bag. It, it comes heavily oiled as well, so you'll want to wipe it down real good before you start uh, messing around with it. Also comes, uh, the Uberti model comes with an extra screw here. Alright, and this is the Paeta box. Also has a nice western theme front. Pretty cool. Color depiction of some cal uh, cavalry soldiers there. Alright, let's check out what's inside there. Very similar to the stuff that's inside the Uberti box. Got your Texas Jacks advertisement there, warranty card, NRA swag, uh, bumper sticker, a little different than the other one. Come and take it, Cimarron Firearms Company. Pretty cool. Uh, just like the other, comes with the uh, owner notice there. And the uh, Paeta manual. It doesn't come with an extra screw, but it does come with uh, your standard run-of-the-mill trigger lock. Alright, so now that we've taken a look at what's in the boxes, let's talk about the guns. But first, let's talk about the manufacturers of the guns. So, uh, Uberti was established in 1959. Um, and they, were, they were independent for, for many years. They were eventually purchased out by Beretta. And I think they were acquired by Benelli, if I'm not mistaken, which is also a member of the Beretta, Beretta Holding Company. Uh, but Italian filmmaker Sergio Leone visited the Uberti factory in the 1960s. Um, he wanted to procure Civil War and Old West revolvers for his, uh, his westerns, uh, like Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, Once Upon a Time in the West, so on and so forth. Um, some other movies that Uberti's have been featured in is the Colt Walker um, in John Wayne's 1969 True Grit, as well as the same model in uh, Clint Eastwood's Outlaw Josie Wales in 79, which is one of my personal favorites. Um, all the firearms in the 1990 Dances with Wolves uh, starring Kevin Costner were Uberti's and a number of Uberti rifles and um, pistols were used in the 1993 film Tombstone starring uh, Val Kilmer and Kurt Russell. Importer, importers of this fine firearm today are Stoger, Taylors, and Cimarron. Uh, this here being a, a Cimarron imported Uberti. Paeta was uh, founded around 1963 and uh, they primarily made hunting, and, hunting rifles and shotguns. Um, many for the the French market um, and then they were approached by a French, uh, French entrepreneur about making a replica 
of the Navy 1851 and importing them into France. Um, however, during production of these 400 pistols, um, some importation laws in France had changed, so France blocked the import of those 400 uh, pistols, which left Paeta in a little bit of a bind. Um, they were eventually able to, to get rid of those 400 pistols, but at their own admission, I believe it was at a loss. So uh, they were in a little bit of financial trouble until uh, 1972, the Paeta brothers began working with American importers. Um, and uh, the rest is, as they say, history. And Paeta has actually managed to uh, carve a pretty good slice into the uh, replica Old West and Civil War firearms market. Uh, importers today for Paeta, EMF, Taylors, and also Cimarron. So when I began looking into getting some single action revolver clones, I wanted to get one-to-one -one clones uh, as close to the original design um, and function as possible. So I was actually disappointed with my first purchase. I bought a, cattle, a Uberti Cattleman II. Um, which I, I wasn't aware of that after 2016 all Uberti um, cattlemen's were, were, were being manufactured with a, a hammer safety. Uh, they added a safety mechanism inside the hammer um, so it did not function as a true 1873 Colt single action should. It only had uh, two hammer clicks, and again, the the hammer and firing pin was was just different. Um, so I, I began to research even further, and I have found these two right here, which are one to one clone Colt single action revolvers, and and um, couldn't be happier with them. So when you, when we're talking about Cimarron models, uh, they've changed a little bit. Their their model names are are, are now all Frontier models. So previously, the, the different model names would allude to whether they were Paeta or uh, Uberti manufactured. But now, all Paeta models will begin with a PP, PP401, PP502, etc. Uh, that will designate it as being a Paeta manufactured Cimarron pistol. All the Uberti models will begin with an MP, that's Mike Papa or CA that will identify it as being a Uberti manufactured Cimarron pistol. All of the Paeta models have four hammer clicks. Um, they are the one-to-one -one clones. So they have not deviated from that original design. Mechanically they operate just as they should. Only the old model frames by Uberti have four hammer clicks and function as the original should. And we're going to get into old model and pre-war frames uh, in a minute as well. Uberti will eventually be installing this safety hammer on all of their models, including including the old model. They haven't told us when. Uh, they just say that it's, it's coming. Um, and it's disappointing to me because uh, I've always liked Uberti. Um, I've always heard that they were one of the best as far as the Colt clones are, and I hate to see them get away from that, but let's dig into the pistols and talk about old model versus pre-war model. So I wanted a one-to-one -one clone Uberity, so it meant I had to get an old model frame. So what is an old model frame? Um, let's talk about that. So... What makes this an old model frame is the bullseye ejector right here. This ejector rod has the bullseye cap on it there. Also, what secures the base pin right here is actually a screw. So if you want to remove the base pin and the cylinder, you've got to take a flathead screwdriver and remove this screw which I mean you can see that kind of puts a little bit of disadvantage on them because you know you've got to carry this tool around with you if you if you want to remove your cylinder uh, out in the field also um, 
the the old models, the original 1873, had a had a, a narrow front sight, pretty pretty thin, and a corresponding narrow um, V notch back sight, rear sight there. So that's an old model frame. These were made from 1873 to 1896. So if that's what you want, if you want an, a, a true 1873 single action clone, old model. After 1896, there were several improvements that were made in the uh, second and third gen Colts. And that's what this is, commonly called a pre-war model. Pre-war meaning before the U.S. involvement in World War II. So these were manufactured from 1896 to 1940. So what makes this a pre-war frame? It's got a crescent or half moon ejector. That's a different shape than, than the old model, bullseye. This has the crescent shape. This is handy. So to take the base pin out, you've got a push pin spring-loaded so you would simply push this and then remove your base pin and your cylinder can come out so pretty handy they also beefed up the front sight you can see it's quite a bit wider there so less easy to get dinged or bent and the rear sight notch is squared and wider The hammer shape, the profile of the hammer is actually a little bit different too between the pre-war and the old model. And the, the knurling is, is a tad bit different as well. That's another small difference. Other than that, I mean, internally they function the same. They just made several, several improvements on the pre-war model. So these are in 357 and 38 special. Um, I chose a modern cartridge because I like the idea of being able to run into Walmart or a sporting goods store and be able to grab a couple of bricks of 38 special and just go plinking, you know. Um, so I did not I did not go with the 45 Colt in these. There are companies that make 45 Colt. Um, if you're not into hand loading, like myself, I'm not much into hand loading. So there are companies that sell um, ready to go 45 Colt, even in black powder, if that's your thing. And there's companies that also sell 38 Special in uh, black powder with uh, bare lead wad cutter uh, bullets and everything, just like they were shooting back then. So if that's your thing, it's available for you. I just again chose the 30, 357 30 special due, due to it just being readily available practically anywhere. So let's talk about the fit and finish um, between the two. There are some uh, noticeable differences in fit and finish between the two. Um, we'll start with the Uberity here. Um, the fit and finish of this Uberity is just, it's beautiful. All the edges are nice and smooth. Um, all the pieces just seem like they fit really well. You can tell that, that this um, went through quite a bit of, of hand fitting and finishing before it, it was sent out. Um, and Cimarron, just like all the other importers, claim that when they get these in from Italy, you know, they, they do their own refinements on them. So I'm not real sure exactly what that is, but um, they claim that they do their own refinements. So it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to have another set of eyes on these, another inspection process before they, they, they get in your hands. The uh, grips on these are walnut. Beautiful grain, too. I'm trying to get it. There we go, some good lighting on it. Beautiful grain in the walnut on these. I've actually got a few of these Uberities, and all the grips are the same, just beautiful. They, they fit into the frame really nice. I mean, that's just smooth right there you can hardly feel the transition same same with how it it comes to the back strap here just all the way around it feels it feels good um, this right in here which can be a common place of, of some sloppy machining is very smooth it's not sharp at all 
um, right around here in your ejection tube is is really nice and polished and finished out good crown work too couldn't be happier with it so let's talk about those four hammer clicks there's your first one second one at that time the cylinder can rotate third fourth that's what you want you gotta have those four four hammer clicks some say that uh, Samuel Colt designed that for the four letters of his last name for C-O-L-T um, possible I, I just kinda think that's just the way the design worked out but either way that's kinda cool alright so onto the Pietta here we'll start with the grips here as well um, these are supposed to be walnut I mean that's what Pieta claims they are. It looks a little different than the Uberity grip, so I'm not sure what kind of walnut it is. Um, they don't fit into the frame quite as nicely as the Uberities do. Along the back strap here, they feel good, and and right here they feel they feel fine. Um, I wouldn't say they're a bad fit, just a different fit than the Uberity. Um, so it's kind of rough in here. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but kind of sharp. Not quite as finished. And not quite as finished around here either. Um, you can see some tool marks right around there. Not bad. I mean, it's not horrible. I, I could actually spend some time with, with uh, some different abrasives and polish that up if I wanted to. This is the stainless steel version. I went with stainless steel because of its durability and, and long-lasting finish. Um, historically, this should be nickel-plated, and they do offer nickel-plated. Um, however, when when nickel plating uh, starts to go downhill, it, it goes downhill pretty fast, and it's ugly. And you're left with little option other than to refinish the whole gun. Whereas with this, um, you know, clean it up, polish it up, put it on my buffing wheel for a minute or two, and you know, shine it back up. And it will look like this for its life. I mean, don't have to worry about it rusting, pitting, anything like that. So I chose to go with the stainless for my shiny gun. Also has four hammer clicks. The hammer is quite a bit lighter in the Pietta. I mean, it comes out of the box. It feels, it, it feels tuned up. I mean, it really does. Um, triggers are also a little bit lighter. I mean, you could always change the spring out in your Uberity if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to have a lighter, uh, hammer spring. Um, they make, they make, uh, all kinds of spring kits for these that are not too expensive, but that is one difference. The, uh, the springs on the Uberity are a little stiffer, springs on the Pietta a little bit lighter. And this, this is the same between all models that I've handled. Uberity uses a stiffer spring when they make these. Okay, so here we are with um, some some dummy cartridges. There's no powder in these, um, and you can see the primer is filled in with like a resin, plastic resin. Uh, so these these are good for just um, playing around with, practicing, you know, loading and unloading your cylinders and whatnot. So I wanted to talk about the how how these are carried, how these are loaded, and how these are carried. So again. With Uberity going to their their new hammer safety, I'm not, and it just bugs me. I'm not I'm not sure why they're doing that. Um, I mean, if I if I want a uh, modern feature or a modern safety in a firearm, I'll buy a modern firearm by God. Um, so when they start rolling those out on their old models on their old old model frame uh, pistols as well, I'll just I'll quit buying them. Um, so as you can see here, the firing pin, when, when this hammer is forward, the firing pin is resting on the primer. And um, there's a couple of good YouTube videos out there on this hammer safety. Um, and, and the guy even shows you like how, how to even change it out. So it's not the end of the world. Um, he was able to you know ins install a standard hammer into his 
um, Uberity and restore it back to a, you know the, the correct function for it, for it being a Colt clone. Um, in both these models, they claim that you can use Colt parts that uh, are actually direct fit into these pistols, which is pretty cool. I haven't tried it yet, but but hey, that's cool. Um, so that's actually what this first position of this of the hammer is for. It it keeps the um, keeps the firing pin off of that cartridge, off the primer. As you can see there, there's it's moved back far enough to where it's it's not even close to touching the, the cartridge. Um, is it 100% safe? No. Um, if you pull the hammer back just a bit and then pull the trigger, I mean, it goes forward. I don't know if that'd be enough to set a cartridge off, but I don't think I'd want to find out. Um, some old timers will say, you know, if you, if you drop it like this, it's like to go off. I mean, I've I've, I've smacked it pretty good, about as hard as I can with my hands and haven't got to budge. Um, also, the way that the the hammer is made with the notches that are in the hammer, you, you can look at it and it's it's believable that uh, over time that notch could could become less pronounced and be easier to slip out of that notch. But that was the original design. Was that's that's how it was designed to be carried. However, people don't, they don't carry it like that. So what's the safe way to carry this? It's simply just put five rounds in and I'll show you how to do that. So first we'll start off with putting it half cocked so the cylinder can rotate. Open your loading gate. Load your first round, skip. Two. three, four, five, close the loading gate, full cock, drop the hammer on an empty cylinder. So now that firing pin is resting on an empty cylinder and that's the safest way to carry this. So you can see if you, you know, if you've got this loaded with six six rounds you got like this it's in your holster and you're riding hard or you're doing some hard work or maybe you've got your cartridge belt and a tool belt on it's getting bumped and banged around you know you you wouldn't want that to go off put a hole in your leg your foot your horse not good so that's that's the safe way to carry it that way it's it's ready to go as you can see you're you've got a live one now in the pipe and it's ready to shoot and to safely decock it, you would pull the trigger, let the hammer, once it goes past where about the second click is, go ahead and release that trigger. And it's on the first notch. Unload it. You can either tilt it, let the shells fall out, or if they're fired shells, they've probably swollen a little bit. So you use your ejector rod there to pop that cartridge out. Pretty easy. All empty. So let's talk about cylinder wear real quick because on single actions they're notorious for, for getting cylinder wear pretty easily. One way you can kind of prevent some of that is, um, so when you got on half cock and this cylinder is free to, to rotate, um, as you can see here, it's, it's kind of in between. Always rotate it back to what I call battery before you go ahead and full cock it. Okay, and the reason for that is uh, you, you can see this piece right here that sticks up for, for these uh, notches in the cylinder right here. It goes down on half cock for it to rotate. And if it's, if it's in between right here, it's out of timing with your, um, with your hammer. It can pop up and make direct contact with the smooth part of your cylinder and mar the finish. Um, I've seen, I've seen these where they've had a solid groove just all the way around it from, from where they've just 
the cylinder has rotated out of timing from from guys you know fanning the trigger pow 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 and just being real sloppy with it if you want to take care of that cylinder just make sure you put it back to battery before you do full cock on it and that will help reduce a lot of that so i hope hope that's that's helpful for you well i think i've covered all my bases of you know what i wanted to cover on in this video we talked about the offerings here from cimarron we talked about paeta and uberity and some of the differences um, between them the fit and finish history of the company when we talked about pre-war frames old model frames um, so i hope you found this helpful if you're in the market to get one of these fine firearms i hope you feel comf confident in in making your purchase um, I personally recommend Cimarron, but uh, Taylor's and EMF also offer good products. But if you're going to order from Cimarron, just, just know by the model numbers of what you're going to get, a Pieta or a Uberti. Old model, pre-war model. Um, newfangled hammer safety or the original design, which I personally uh, am fond of. There. Now we can be friends again. <laughs>